<laughs> so we've got the net profit after tax. We must now look at the repurchase of shares. As I said, it's the amount that we paid over and above the average. In total, we paid three rand fifty, and we worked out that the average was uh, seventy-five cents. So three rand fifty was the total minus seventy-five cents of that was the average. So what did we pay more than the average? 3 Rand 50 minus 75 gives me 2 Rand 75. And this 2 Rand 75 must now go to re retained income. So if I go to retained income, uh, I purchased or repurchased 60,000 shares. And the amount over and above the average was 2 Rand 75. So I take the total number that I repurchased and I multiply it by the difference between what I paid for them and what uh, the average was. And that should give me 165,000. Remember, it makes the amount less. I'm paying it, so I will have less retained income, so I must put it in brackets. The dividends I must split between interim and final. So let's see what information they give me. On the list of balances that last one's dividend, they tell me that was the interim. So I use that figure that is given to me. Uh, interim is 630,000. So it is 630,000. Final, let's see what they tell me about the final. Final dividend of 22 cents per share was declared on 30 June 2017 uh, and only shares in the share register qualify. They tell us that because sometimes there may be a note to tell you that those people uh, that we bought the shares back may also qualify, but in this case it's not so. So only the number of people that has shares qualify. So how many people have shares? Go back to your note, uh, your ordinary share capital, 4,140,000 shares. So the number of shares is the final number of shares on my ordinary share capital note. It's 4,140,000. And I must multiply that by the, num uh, uh, the amount of, that I'll pay for shares, 22 cents. So it's 22 divided by 100, or we can just say 0 0.22, 22 divided by 100, and that gives me 910,800. Add the 2 in the block, the 630 plus 910, and put it above. But remember, shares is also something we pay, so it will make the amount less, so I must put it in brackets. 1,540,800. Now I must just calculate the balance at the end. It would simply be the balance at the beginning, 874,000, plus the, the profit after tax, the 105,200, minus the 165, minus the 154,800. And that gives me my balance at the end, which is 219,400. And that is then basically uh, the retained income note. Good, so then we can move on to the balance sheet. On our balance sheet, they've got certain figures already printed there, certain information left out. Know the layout, then you immediately put in the blanks on the, uh, where, the where the ER blanks. And the uh, non-current assets consist of fixed assets and fixed deposits or financial assets. Current assets consist of inventory, trade and other receivables. So it's not in there, so I'm going to put it in before I even start doing the question. Trade and other receivables and cash and cash equivalents. Cash and cash equivalents. Okay, 
uh, and then we get to the shareholders equity, equity and liabilities. Shareholders equity, always your ordinary share capital and retained income. Your non-current will be loan and your current will be trade and other payables and then there may be some other items in there like the short-term portion of the loan or whatever else. We don't know yet. So we'll leave that open for now. Good, so the first thing we're looking for is the fixed assets. Let's go and see what they give us about fixed assets. Uh, if I go through there, uh, this first bit is about share capital, then about dividends, then some adjustments, the loan, nothing about fixed assets, and on the list of balances, it's a question mark. Don't be concerned. We know for now we cannot put in the fixed assets. It is still a question mark. So we leave it. We, we carry on. Maybe we can find the other. Trade and other receivables. Now if we look at trade and other receivables. So if we do a trade and other receivables, we must know what to look for. In trade and other receivables, the note will start with the trade debtors. It will be less a provision for bad debt. That will give us a net trade debtors. To that, we're going to add any accrued income and prepaid expense. And then if such ends on a debit, such can either be a receivable or a payable. It will also go in here. So if you know what forms part of the note, it is then easier to go and look for the figures. Because you're not doing the note itself, but you need to know the layout of the note. Else you won't know what to add to get to the trade and other receivables. So first thing, I'm looking for my trade debtors. Now there, on my uh, list of balances, debtors control is 317,000. So that will be the first figure that I'll show on my calculation, 317,000, uh, 317,000. To that, I've got to add, there's the three, I've got to add or deduct the uh, provision for bad debts. Now, there's no indication or no balance for that uh, in the list, so maybe there's some other information. Sometimes they may not be one, but in this case, under D, Provision for bad debts is set at 5% of outstanding debtors. So I must just go and work it out. So my provision for bad debts is 5% of the, the debtors. How much was the debtors? 317,000. So I must simply multiply 317,000 with 5%, and that will give me uh, the provision, which is 15850. I must deduct that from the debtors. So on here, I'm going to show minus the 15850 for the provision. The next thing I'm looking for is any accrued income. Income not yet received, so somebody owes them to me, making it a receivable. So any accrued income, uh, provision insurance that is paid, uh, we prepaid some of it because we so that will be a bit later on. Uh, let's just make sure there's no other information on the list of balance, balances. And there, income received in advance 6,600. Income received in advance, uh, we need to pay it back should something happen. So it is not a receivable but a payable. So there's no accrued income. Uh, that we can pick up, but that uh, insurance premium that we paid part of, or we've got an annual premium, but some of it is for next year. We must take that out because that is a prepaid expense, but we must first go and calculate it. Uh, okay, so let's see how we will do that. With it, when you get something where there's uh, portions that you need to, or that a portion of it is for the next year, uh, we're going to draw a timeline. 
let's just get to it. So for insurance, I'm drawing a timeline. I will first of all say what my year is. Let's just get it nice and my year runs from the 1st of July 2016 to the 30th of June 2017. The premium that I paid was from the 1st of October 2016 to the 30th of September 2017. That portion is for the new year. Our year ends 30 June, but we paid up until uh, 30 September. So I must see how many months that is. So it's for July, August and September. So I paid three months into the new year. So now I must go and calculate how much uh, the, the premium for three months is. So if I look at what they give me, they tell me the premium for a year is 31,800. So 31,800 is the premium for a year. Now, if I divide that by 12, I will get to what it is per month. And that I must then multiply by 3 to get to what it is for 3 months. So I take 31,800 uh, divided by 12 times 3, or I could simply say 31,800 times 3 over 12. And that will give me the premium for three months, which is 7950. And that was a, pre, uh, in, a prepaid expense. So I must put it under uh, my receivables. So my receivables will be more with that 79950. As I said, we did not have any accrued income. Uh, the only other thing before I move on, because there's one more thing that can affect us, and that is uh, my SARS income tax. So, because it may be that SARS is a receivable if I pay too much. Now, I must, so I will first work it out before I actually uh, close off the note. That I will do in the next part.